Hello and welcome back. The second video, the second book review. Let's get on with it. So, last week we did the Silmarillion, uh, which was, eh, was a mediocre book review. Uh, today we do not a fantasy book, not a. Oh, fuck's sake. I'll do that again. Hello and welcome back. So today the second book review. Last week we did the Silmarillion and today is not a fantasy book, but rather a thriller. Um, you may know it as the first summer blockbuster uh, by Steven Spielberg. And the book came first and the book, as always, is better. Jaws. Um, <laughs> why Jaws? I heard it was a good book, so I started reading it and... It's a phenomenal book. Not a good book, it is a phenomenal book. There are some downfalls where the film does improvise and help you, but overall it is really damned good. So, you all know the story of Jaws. Shark kills people, Mayor doesn't want to close the beach because of the summer and that's what the town relies on, and in here it goes into a lot more detail as to why the town can't close because there's, there's dodgy dealings with the mayor and some property developers and uh, the, the, the rich people that come down from the summer, they've, they've got money, so they have influence. And that's why, <laughs> that's why, that's pretty much the running theme for the shore side in this book. It's really good. And Richard Dreyfus in the film, who plays Hooper, uh, him and Brody seem to get on really well. And even in the film, Brody seems quite taken aback and sad when Hooper's cage comes uh, detached and he thinks he's dead. In here, it's a very different relationship. <laughs> Brody hates Hooper, okay? And Hooper is sly and cowardly and an overall arsehole. To be honest, that's the thing you need to understand about the book Jaws. Everyone is an arsehole, right? Uh, you've got the mayor <laughs> throwing off Chief Brody and doing dodgy dealings. You've got Matt Hooper, who's trying to get with Brody's wife because she knew Hooper's brother back in sort of uh, like university and like tennis and shit. And um, yeah, that's the other thing. Brody's wife comes from sort of old money, good family, and Brody's just this sort of like nobody in their eyes. Uh, which is also, you know, a good dynamic and you really feel for his wife when she like thinks about her old days and, you know, like he's marrying Brody Wright. Like she, you know, should she have stuck with her old money and listened to her mother? And that culminates at some point in the book where she um, where she sleeps with Hooper just to sort of try and get back. And she feels guilty. <laughs> but that's, you know, it, like I said, everyone's an arsehole. She's cheating on Brody. Brody's Brody's pretty much like a borderline drunk in this book. There's a, a scene where they're having a party uh, with Hooper around, and yeah, he 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 has one drink too many, and he embarrasses himself, which is really good to see. So it's a thriller not only with the shark, but also with the human element. That's one thing I think the film missed out on. This has got a phenomenal human element in it, which I think is so good. Um, now for the shark. Uh, obviously, the shark is prominent in both this and the film. Um, kills people. <laughs> That's a, it's a shark that kills people. Um, Quint is in it, obviously. Um, and they, they go out a few times on the boat to try and catch a shark. Um, not actually that far from shore, as I was led to believe from watching the film. Um, and yeah, Quint dies. Um, funnily enough, Spoilers, if you haven't read the book, so just skip ahead like a minute or 10 seconds. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'll wave my arms like this so you can see in the um, timeline when to come back. Quick spoiler, Hooper dies, okay? Hooper dies. He gets in that cage, he misses, and the shark fucking kills him, <laughs> which I thought was great. I mean, you know, you killed off one of your main characters throughout the book. And I mean, Hooper was a, a dick in this anyway like I keep on saying. So you don't really mind that he died, but in the film, when you think he dies, you're quite shaken up. Uh, in here, you're like, he dies. Even Brody's like, yeah, 
He died. I mean, I didn't want him to die, but uh, I didn't really want him to, you know, be all right either, <laughs> which I thought was was brilliant. Um, you know, <laughs> Brody's an asshole. <laughs> it's like, you fucked my wife. <laughs> um, Quinn dies, uh, I think, in the same way as the film. I can't quite remember now. Sorry. But yeah, Quint dies. Um, unfortunately, Brody doesn't do the whole smile up, you son of a bitch, and blow the canister up in the shark's mouth. It's a lot... It's a lot more disappointing than that. The shark's been harpooned, like in the film, uh, quite a few times. And Brody is on the sinking ship. And the shark's coming towards him. And instead of firing at it with his rifle, the shark just dies. Just dies. Because it's been wounded so many times. And you you, you, you read it and you're like, oh, that was, that was disappointing. It's a very unclimactic end. You know, for, for so much phenomenal human element building up, really good, really disappointing ending, unlike the film, which is a shame. So you just got Brody who comes back, and that's about it. But in saying that, it's actually worth it. For the <laughs> disappointing end is definitely worth it. I mean, how many pages? 285 pages in this edition. So yeah, the first 200 and I know. 265 pages it is definitely worth it um so yeah just go out and buy the book it is awesome uh, i hope you enjoyed that review um i forgot to do the wavy arms there you go <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank you for doing this review with me it was good and i'll see you next week with another book